All candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. I'm Hannah Combs. I'm reporting with the Bay Times and Record Observer. And here with us today is Chris Corcorino, who is the Republican candidate for District 4. Correct. So thank you for joining us today, Thank Chris. you for having me here. We're going to take uh, two minutes and let you introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be County Commissioner in Queen Anne's County. Okay. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Chris Corcorino, and I'm running for County Commissioner in District 4. Um, I live on Kent Island with my wife and my three daughters. Uh, they are all uh, students of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I myself am a graduate of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I graduated from Queen Anne's County High School in 1992. My wife is a small business owner here in Queen Anne's County. Uh, I'm a lawyer. I deal with uh, complex civil litigation, which are cases involving millions of dollars, lots of parties, and very um, divergent opinions and interests. Um, and part of my job is to not just analyze strengths and weaknesses of my client's case, but of the other parties, and then try to work collaboratively uh, with the other attorneys to find a resolution. And if we can't do that, then I have to advocate for my client in the courtroom. Uh, and I think that's similar to what a county commissioner skill would have to be to collaborate with the other county commissioners, collaborate with stakeholders and the citizens to find solutions to the challenges that face the community. Um, additionally, uh, in my role as an attorney, I advise businesses on strategic planning. Prior to becoming an attorney, I was a small business owner, so I understand some of the challenges that small business owners um, can face and how governments can help them or hinder them. Um, I'm running for county commissioner, really it's sort of a, a sense of obligation to the county. Um, this county has so much to do, uh, not just this county, but the people in this county with who I have become. Um, and I want to be able to give back to the county on that and I want to be able to part of shaping the future of the county that my children are growing up in and hopefully that they'll settle down and raise their own family in. Very good. Speaking about some of those challenges, what do you think are the biggest issues facing the county right now? Yeah. Well, I would say, first, I think one thing to point out, the challenge that I don't really think is facing the community um, is the county is on pretty strong economic stand, standing right now, thanks to the work that the current county commissioners have done, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope to be able to build upon that. Um, that said, there are always challenges that the community faces. Traffic is a never-ending problem if you live in Queen Anne's County. Uh, I'm been here long enough to remember drawbridges and uh, stoplights on Ken Island is creating traffic problems. So we need to find ways to, to ease that burden. Um, opi opioid epidemic, uh, which a lot in the community obviously recently have been doing a lot. We have to continue our efforts on that. Uh, job growth, so we have more of our citizens who can work in the county versus having to travel outside the county because that creates a, another host of issues if they're constantly commuting outside the county. Um, and then another thing that I think is very important is uh, the communication between the county and the citizens. Um, the county does a lot, QAC TV is you know, one example, to get information out to the county. But as I'm going out and talking to people through the campaign, it's amazing to me um, how much information is maybe just not really getting to the people as well as it should. Um, and a lot of the citizens who feel like they're not being heard. So I would like to work on improving the ability for the commissioners to get information in from the citizens and then to get the information back out to them on why certain decisions are being made the way they are because I think that people may not agree with a particular vote but if they can see a thought process that's behind it and know why you came out the way you did um, they're going to be more accepting of that decision. You're not going to be able to uh, make votes that everybody's going to be happy with all the time. You have to make difficult decisions sometimes but if you can explain why you're doing something I think that would help. So improving communication both back and forth between the commissioners and the citizens. Okay. We're going to switch over to uh, a line of questions. We'll give you a minute to okay. come up with answers. Um, we're talking about the comprehensive plan. It's going to be reviewed and updated in the next term. What is your vision for, the, for that plan? Mm -hmm. So I think my vision is somewhat irrelevant as to the comprehensive plan because the comprehensive plan is the community's plan. So um, I think what's more important is what is the community's vision for the future of the plan and how do we get that as I talked about the communication issue. 
from the last time we did the comprehensive plan, we've had a lot of innovations in technology mm -hmm. that will make it a lot easier for the, the county to push out information to the citizens and then to get information back from them. And I want to make sure that we're using that as much as possible. Um, you know, many informational podcasts to get information out to people they can listen to it on their commute to work. Online surveys to get information back in, live streaming some of the meetings. Uh, I think the more information that we can get out to the county so they understand what the comprehensive plan means, what it entails, and then give us their feedback. That's where we're going to really get what the vision should be. Okay. Um, another issue facing the county are senior citizens. Uh, we have a larger population of senior citizens. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that we could uh, provide services to them, or you could provide services to them? Right. So I'm the son of two county senior citizens. Both my parents um, live in this county, um, and so. Making sure we're taking care of our seniors is, is important. They're, they're one of our largest population groups and they're also the largest volunteer group we have mm -hmm. in the county. They've done a lot for us. We need to make sure we're doing stuff for them. Um, the county has had some, some efforts with the integrated medical assistance, trying to go out to, to the seniors with medical care so that we can reduce the number of ER visits. We need to stay ahead of the curve on transportation and social activities for the seniors to make sure we can get them out and active and being still keep keeping productive in, this, in the community. Um, and then senior housing, we need to be more diligent about the cost for senior housing because when you have a significant increase, especially someone who's on fixed income, um, that can really set them back and we can't let them be caught off guard. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, request for maintenance of funding, about maintenance of effort that the school system has approached the county about? Right. So the, uh, I'm the father of three uh, students in Queen I'm the only candidate actually that's running that has three current students um, in Queen County Schools. So um, it's a, an issue that's near and dear to me probably more so than anybody who's running. Um, I think unfortunately the maintenance effort creates a contentious relationship that shouldn't be there. I think we should have more cooperation between the county commissioners and the Board of Education, more communication, not just at budget time where you come and say we need X dollars more when other budgets have already been funded. I think that makes it more difficult. Um, I would like to see the communication opened up earlier on as to why we need more money, what it's going to go to. I'd, like to. I'd also like to get us a consultant to come in who specializes in reviewing education budgets to say, here are some redundancies that can be eliminated. Here are some efficiencies that we can put into place. And if that third party consultant comes back and says everything is running tip top shape, they need more money. That's easier for the commissioners then to go and say to the taxpayers, this is why we're giving more money. It's been reviewed because the commissioners also have to be good stewards of the money. So I think that's a way to approach those issues. How would you balance future development and protecting the environment? Okay, so I, I don't think that protecting the environment and development are necessarily mutually exclusive. Uh, and I think there are ways that we can balance both. Um, I would encourage developers to meet with the environmental groups uh, about their concerns and maybe their wish list of what to include in developments to make them more um, eco-friendly as they occur to reduce the impact to the environment that a development would have. Um, and then also explore incentives that can be put into place for developments to encourage more eco-friendly building practices. Um, and perhaps better stormwater management practices above and beyond what they're required to do. If they get incentives, I think you're going to get the buy-in from the builders um, and they'll see that there's also a benefit to them economically for incorporating those types of practices. Mm -hmm. When we talk about economic development, what are some suggestions you would have for fostering business growth within the community? Right, so I think one thing is constant communication with the business community to find out what are the obstacles to their success in this county, what works for them, um, what can we do to attract more businesses to start here and grow here? Because if a business starts in the county, it's more likely to grow in the county. Uh, we have a lot of county citizens who have jobs that are location independent. So if they have a laptop and a Wi-Fi signal, they can work anywhere. But what we, what we don't have um, is co-working spaces. And I would like to see maybe with the next uh, one of the commercial spaces that's empty to attract a company like perhaps like WeWork or something like that that would incorporate hot desk spaces so that those citizens can find a place to work here in the county. I know a lot of them, they, they travel across the bridge for a co-working space in Annapolis or something in Easton. We should have something like that in the county. That also can be a catalyst for new businesses who are starting 
who they can't afford to rent full-time office space, but they do need an office setting a certain amount of days out of the week. Okay. Residents in the northern part of the county, they often feel like they're not getting the same level of services that the rest of the county does. What are your suggestions for balancing that? Mm -hmm. uh, first step is to listen to those residents, find out what are the services that they don't think that they're getting, identify those challenges, and then you can plot out some action items to address that. You know, one of the issues in the northern part of the county is it is more rural, so the houses are more spread out. Um, so the dissemination of the services um, is not as easy as, say, emergency services on Kent Island where you can reach thousands of people within 10 or 15 minutes. In the rural part of the county, that's a little bit more difficult. So we need to identify those challenges and then have a plan of action of how do we address that. But it starts with listening to find out what are the services they think they need more. And, and perhaps th some of the services are there, we just need to explain to them how to get to those services. Mm -hmm. um, are there any topics that we haven't covered that you feel are important um, as, as a county commissioner? Um, well, I touched on this um, briefly, but I, I think what I find to be the most important thing is the communication aspect. Um, I hear a lot of people say that you know they they feel like the county commissioners aren't working for all citizens. And I've gotten to know um, the county commissioners who are currently sitting th through running, um, and I, I know that their heart is in the right place, and they are trying to do their best. And I think, unfortunately, um, that always doesn't get through because the lines of communication maybe are not as good as they should be. I'd like to see more forums with the county commissioners, open house type forums, to give an opportunity for the public to come and comment and get some feedback from the commissioners in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Well, thank you very much for joining us Thank you us very today. much. I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you.